Okay, welcome back. In case you've just joined us, it is a Friday uh, Technofile Tuesday. Why can't I wait for Friday? Looks like I'm in a mood to just go away and relax. It's okay. A few days time, Friday will come. It's time for Off the Press. We'll be taking a look at stories that made it to the headlines on some national dailies. And I have been joined by Chris Kendewando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. But Chris will be joining us from Lagos this morning. Hello, Chris. Good morning. How are you? So good to have you, you join you. us, as always. Thank you, Reverend. Okay, so Chris, let's start with the Nation newspaper. The Nation newspaper leads with APC top positions, why Adamu Omisore lost out. And then above the masthead, you have, we have database of 15 million poor Nigerians, says agency. Um, how the $800 million will be transferred to beneficiaries. Let's start with that. This database of 15 million poor Nigerians. Of course, we, everyone, the story is everywhere. The 12 million poor, they'll be given 8,000 monthly for six months. And so here we're having the agency saying they actually have a database of 15 million poor Nigerians. Let's start. Would you, do you, have you seen this database? Do you have, have you seen it? Chris. Yeah. Have, have, have anybody seen it? Even members of the National Assembly, uh, the night nice session, said that um, the, the data that our, uh, the wide administration was trying to do was, um, uh, what would I have, I don't want to use the word fake, uh, but um, that a lot of fictitious names in that um, uh, list. So uh, this government is barely two months in office. When did they gather the uh, database that they are talking about? Uh, I still believe that. Uh, this to me does not make sense. Uh, we have gone beyond this. Uh, I don't know why this government wants to go through the same trajectory that the last administration uh, went through, where billions and billions and trillions of naira were fictitiously put and spent on irrelevances. Um, we are talking about 12 million to 5 million, um, 12 million to 15 million Nigerians paying them 8,000 8, naira. Um, every month, that comes to about 42,000 or 40, less than 45,000 dollars. In total, mm -hmm. that is less than 48,000. Uh, uh, 60 dollars. Yes, 48,000. That is less than, that is less than about $60. And that is what you want to pay. That in itself cannot even buy a bank of rice uh, for now. So even if you give them and uh, the high rise, what would they, what of the continent? I think this is a waste of funds. I will say the time without time number. This money can turn into other things. If you use that and push that into the refinery, getting a new, a new refinery, um, that will solve the problem. It's just like uh, we say, you just live uh, in my language, you leave the, the, the rat and uh, the house burning and running after a rat. The fact remains that poverty is here. We are having over 130 million Nigerians um, under the poverty uh, line. We have a high level of unemployment. And you are telling us that you are going to transfer 8,000 Naira to people. That, to me, is a total scam. And that this, that's this continue as far as I'm concerned. doesn't make any sense. And you come to think of it, who told you that I'm not having... What, what of people like me? Uh, am I not entitled to palliative as well? Oh. Am I not a Nigerian? Uh -huh. am I not, am I, are you saying that I'm not affected by the fuel, uh, with the problem with the fuel, the basic fuel? That is how it is done. Under. So I always think that they should get this. In. And to worsen it, there was also a 70 million, 60 billion naira mm. for the National Assembly, over 200 naira per um, member of National Assembly. These are millionaires and very, very rich people. They are still approving such for them. So I think that this doesn't make any sense at all. Of course, there was, uh, lots of questions have been, uh, been asked with regards to this 8,000 Naira thing. So what next after the 8,000 Naira? What next after 8,000 Naira? Well, Is this the, the, the palliative that they've been promising us? Don't worry. Yes, we know that the palliative was removed uh, rather suddenly. Uh, but do not worry. We're working on palliatives. And Nigerians were waiting for these palliatives to arrive. And this is what we're hearing. And I don't, I don't blame them. I blame the labor union, the NLC. The NLC dropped the ball. When it ought to go into 
strong with the federal government job because despite the fact that um, there was a, uh, an injunction for the National Industrial Court uh, to that effect, but I think they would have done better. They dropped the ball and went to sleep and saying that they're going to go into negotiation with the federal government in August. Uh, this is the outcome of that negotiation, if there has been any. Anyway, so uh, I, still, I still feel, and, still be, and most Nigerians do feel, that this is not the way to go. And uh, we saw what uh, they did with the anchor of brass um, loan um, uh, during the administration. We saw how they distributed, quote and unquote, trillions and trillions of naira uh, by the, the Minister of Monetary Affairs to give us to them uh, and feeding children that we are told with us. I, my children were told with me, and they said they were giving them. So, uh, this, uh, it, I repeat, to me, this is how. This is how this issue starts. Uh, it is a very controversial. We cannot just be spending money or just dashing up money for the fun of it. And for the for the fun of it, where are the names? What is the demography? How do people arrive at who you think that's right? 8,000 8,000 naira. What can 8,000 naira buy? And after that, after the six months, mm. what happens? What happens? Are you going to change the price of to what it used to be? Or will there still be entering transportation? If you challenge that it, a 500 billion into buying by buses. Um, uh, that will make it, I'm sure you must have seen that uh, this, that was uh, circulating on social media um, about the number of buses that 800, 500 billion can buy, about um, 8,000 buses or there about, if they distribute that across the states, that will even make much, much sense because people cannot be able to, certain people can be able to see, look at what the governor of, um, of Banu State did. He bought the vehicles to be convening uh, the people to the farm and bringing them back mm -hmm. so that they don't suffer the cost of transportation. That is direct impact. Mm -hmm. That is what we are talking about. That is a man with future. But all this one that they are just doing, parabolating and saying they are going to distribute it, uh, 8,000 naira. Does it make any sense? It doesn't make any sense at all. All right, let's look, look for another headline that we can talk about because there are quite a couple of them on the nation newspaper, but we won't touch all. Here is this one, INEC, Tunubu, Abuja residents, not superior to other Nigerians. PDP, LP lied on electronic results coalitions. That's on the election tribunal. Talk to us about this, Chris. Well, um, the... The cases at the tribunal, um, all the parties have submitted their arguments, the documentation uh, to the tribunal, and that was closed. So it is now for the tribunal to look at various evidence that were presented to it by the various parties. And based on that, uh, they're going to uh, come up with their judgment. And also, we await. Um, this reminds me of what happened in 1979 or there about uh, men. I don't know how, <laughs> how young you were. In 1979, but that was what we were talking about. It to third of to third of to third of, uh, to of uh, 19 states during the Shagari, uh, uh, our war, um, Aziki, where the election that uh, brought in President uh, Muhammad Buhari. It was very very controversial in 1979. Remember that was five or six to be put in there. But I knew what was happening, and there was a judgment at Supreme Court. So if the issue of Status of the FCT is going to be uh, determined. Let us determine it once and for all. Once and for all. Yes, once and for all. Let's just determine it once and for all. But He's haven't saying, we determined it already? Haven't we determined no, it we already? No, no, we have. But the court will have the final say. It is what the court says that becomes after the tribunal. Whoever, depending on whoever, irrespective of whoever wins and tribunal. This case will still get to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court will ultimately give the final judgment on this. And so that was going to happen. And I also looking at the one page, we're looking at the crisis in the APC. We had the chairman and the secretary yesterday finally um, uh, resigned or dropped out. Um, it, it, we saw it coming. It, it's not, if you look at the utterances of the uh, Adgon national chairman, uh, his antecedents from the one shows his bias. He, despite the fact that he's the chairman or national chairman of the party who ought to remain neutral, we are a father uh, of the house. But when you now start taking position, then this ultimately was going to happen. Remember what happened with the primaries, where he permanently um, supported the candidature of the former Senate president. And in fact, to the extent that he said that NWC have endorsed him as the only candidate. 
only for us to hear that out. He was against the, uh, the candidature of the president elect. And after that, if you him to shift his word, his word, he continued on the trajectory of always um, attacking either the president or even members of the legislative and So what happened during the, um, uh, the selection and the uh, election of principal officers, where he went practically uh, directly in the uh, opposite direction with his party. So, but we saw it coming, and uh, it's not a surprise that uh, he has been shot away. And um, the party would now rally around to have another question to elect new national chairman and the, the, the national secretary. Well, it's interesting you've gone there. I was going to leave that story. I saw it boldly, and it's on almost all the national dailies. But I was going to leave it to the end of our discussion because I thought, you know what, let's look at things that would affect the course of Gary. The cause of rise, the cause of fear first. All this their political stuff going on within their parties, for me, it's not parity right now. Or, or do you not agree with me, Chris? I totally agree with you, but even at that, whatever goes on within their party will also affect us. So we have to talk about it because this is the ruling party. If they don't get their ass together, then you can. Also, let's also even take it for that. I can see below the, the I'm taking looking at the front page of the paper now. You can see below the headline, the picture of the president, um, that is his arrival from um, the AU conference in Kenya. Mm. The president has been to Ecopass, he has been to um, Kenya, he just came back. The question I asked, what stopped the president from going to the two state where over 300 Nigerians have been killed in the past mm. few days? We say that Nigerian life don't matter. You know, this kind of it, impact, most often than not, it's not just what you say, but the action that you take. Mm -hmm. is, uh, there have been killing in the, in, in the North Central, especially in, in Plateau State in the, in the past few days. Other leaders, there was something that happened, was it in a, a yeah, I think, you know, even the US and also France recently. You remember when the riot broke in yeah. uh, France uh, recently by the killing of just one person? Exactly. The president of France, he was at, and he, I think he went for a, a conference outside the country. He has to quickly come back to the country and try to assuage, uh, persuade the um, the French people and also the same thing happened also in the US. I don't know what a few months back that the president Biden had to come back. So if you have over 300 people, Nigerians being killed, 300 over 300 so far that those that have been satisfied, and the president has gone to Kenya, he has gone to Ecuador, and so he was elected. Um, I expect him to have flown, even apart from Kenya, I expect him to have flown straight to Plateau State to even show some empathy to the people of Plateau State over those first things, so as to send signals. Yes, I know that it's not. He is the chief commander in chief, and he has given directive to security agencies and the security chief to nip this in the bud. But that empathy was necessary, and uh, so if you have not done that, you are not telling the president. President, show us the human angle in you, and let's see you. Indeed, that's a good statement to put forward. However, still going back to the case at the tribunal, when are we expecting the judgment, Chris? August. Yes, uh, it should be around August. You know that we're giving a time, I think it's about 19. So um, I'm, I'm sure that by August, probably, um, by end of August, we're going to be getting the, that tribunal uh, judgment. And they have a time, it's time bound, as we say in law. It's yeah. time bound. Um, unlike before, where you just have a time frame, people just leave it open ended. It can take two years, three years. Or, no, 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 no. It's no longer the case. This yeah. case is time bound. And definitely, uh, by the end of August, I'm sure that uh, our early September will get a joint from the oh, tribunal. Okay, let's move from the Nation newspaper to uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, the Punch also obviously leading with the same story, the politics going on uh, with the APC. But let's look at this headline right on top of the masthead. FG grants 56 import licenses as fuel consumption drops. Well, um, licenses to import, I guess. Um, yes. But if, if that, yes, the big fact remains that it is like we are going the old way. Issue of licenses for people to import is not a solution. I'll continue to say it. The solution is our providing our own analysis to find out. We are a country, we produce good oil, we have the raw material. So if we have the raw materials, what most of us from getting to the end um, through the value chain? And making sure that those of uh, those uh, petroleum products, um, products are refined in Nigeria, that will bring up cost, and it also conserve the hard and our very valuable scarce 
um, All right. foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know how much spending on the foreign exchange for this world, that is a, a huge problem. So let us be the final. I'm sure that is most of the problem. I know it's a long term uh, uh, project, but it can start now. Yeah, we had uh, uh, a member of Ipman yesterday on the program, and this was our final discussion, you know, and final word on this very matter, because he also talked about how their members are also seeking for licenses to import. But at the end of that discussion, we agreed that, look, the best thing would be to have our refineries working. It's so embarrassing that we are talking about importing fuel, importing fuel, when we actually exporting crude it does make sense at all it doesn't make sense all right so moving forward you have just beside it and tracks government plans nationwide animal vaccination and below that uh, that same uh, punch newspaper you have poultry farms shutting down over high maize price let's look at these two together Apparently, there is this thing that's coming uh, against animals and government is planning uh, world nationwide vaccination and poultry farmers shutting down because it's become too expensive to run their farms. Yes, Food prices. They say, you know, when we're going on, we always say that uh, prevention is better than cure. It's not that I understand that phrase that we used to have when we were kids. Prevention is better than cure. So, uh, we have, let's have massive... Uh, Vaccination, Nigeria, so that uh, we don't run into this terrible brick wall that is. Uh, we are not putting, we are not um, focusing on some of these issues, and it is only when it comes to an epidemic uh, uh, level that Nigerians, that is how we do our things. So I, I hope that the relevant agencies, including the Ministry of Health and the, not only the Federal Ministry of Health, also the Ministry of Health in in the state and also local government are, are geared towards making sure that um, we get people vaccinated uh, with that vaccination for place as quickly as possible. Uh, and that's what it's supposed to be. Um, the second one you ask is what? Poultry farms shutting down over high maize price. Yes, um, of course, they have to because um, it's even getting worse now. You know that um, yesterday, um, Russia refused to uh, sign uh, renew its agreement with uh, Ukraine on uh, grain, and that is the step that pushed the prices of grain uh, over and above uh, expectation across the globe and Nigeria. So, uh, but the question we ask: What is the problem? What is the root of the problem? Why are we not getting enough grain or maize as it were? Um, it could also be due to several factors. One is the insecurity. Mm -hmm. You know that a lot of Nigerians are not to the farm again because they are being killed and uh, they are being made. And that is why we said that security is, is, is like a chain. Once there's a disconnect in one of the chain, in one of the things within the chain that they are best able that. So if insecurity becomes a problem and the farmers are not going back to the farm, then that itself becomes an issue because at the end of it, uh, there will be a problem. But I know that the federal government has given up on all that for the release of um, tons and tons of uh, millions and tons of into the system that I don't know the impact that is going to be. But poultry is one of the key areas where uh, our people derive their protein, derive their uh, what is their feeds. So if that sector is affected, then it's supposed to be. We are not even looking, we are not even able to satisfy our local consumption, progress of exporting. And this is an area where we can make so much money. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you can see now even the markets, most of the time you see the imported ones, uh, imported uh, frozen uh, chicken, from Kutun, mostly from Kutunu. That is what is happening now. We are not having enough production. So I think we should look at all this value chain and make sure that uh, whatever we can do to increase production um, is done. But even at that, if we have it, uh, no, no. Um, the question is how many people can afford it at this time? Mm. How many people can afford it? That is the question. The purchasing power of Nigerians have gone way, 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 way down. And there's no increase in salary. When they've increased um, petroleum products by over 300% to today, nobody's talking about increased increment in salary. It's only interesting that the that governor said it's increasing it by 10,000 now. What happened to other states? What happened to even to within the private sector? Mm. What is happening? Nobody's talking about that. Yeah, what happens to those? Yeah, yeah, what happens to those who do not earn salaries, who have to fend for themselves? Like these poultry yeah, farmers. Yeah. 
these poultry farmers exactly. spend a lot mm -hmm. a lot to exactly. feed their birds exactly. and, and and of course yeah. the cost of eggs not only poultry farmers even though they just believe them. not only poultry farmers those in the big meat somebody told me um, last week that um, is having serious problem with his pigs and breast for them those that are also into fishing uh, mm -hmm. if you see you need to see how much this uh, what is that fish you want to eat well, well, for the pursuit? What was it called? <laughs> catfish. <laughs> catfish. Uh, catfish. <laughs> catfish. You need to see. You need to see the complaint. So the complaint is all over. Mm. And then um, if you go to market now, then you, know, you want to buy the fish. Like you are a lady. You know how much that costs. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. We are also talking of tomatoes. We are talking of pepper. We are talking of onions. Not just, um, uh, just a, a chicken. I bet it. Everything. Even. Even me, myself, I love beans so much. You know how much beans cost now? As a, as a veggie, uh, as a twin, you know, we eat beans a lot. You need to know how much how beans is cost, it cost now. So that is the problem. So food security for me is key. And that is the area where I think that the government should be in. Instead of pumping and dashing people 8,000 now, if you push this 500 billion into agriculture, I'm sure that we're going to make a good of If you're going to give loans to SMEs, let us even say you give a loan one million, out of that 500 billion. You are identifying certain um, this thing, um, farmers and the rest of them, give them one, one million each. You'll be surprised that if you give them that one million, and they can be able to employ about three more people to assist you, to join them in their business, mm -hmm. to be able to assist them. That in itself is of employment. And a lot of people will be brought within the, within the employment scheme. So I don't think this government is great. And um, I think they should just be careful the way they are going about it. You know, the same money that we say we are not happening is what we are trying to share. They said they made 400 billion naira from the twelve sources. Now you want to send 500 billion for palliatives for that same source. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. I am one of those who believe that Africa, and well, let's leave it restricted to Nigeria, we have no business importing grains because our lands are very arable. There's nothing you throw in any part of Nigeria that would not grow without even nurturing it. It just men, grows. In the north, men, we have... Men, men, of, men of your backyard there, your backyard, mm -hmm. if, you put, if you put tomatoes there, it will grow. Mm -hmm. If you put... You see, it's, it's easy. You don't even need to take A lot of things are going from my compound. Don't drop it. Between, that is what I'm saying. Drop it. Look at... Okay, let's, let's, take, let's take a first example. If you are moving from Lagos to Benin, start looking at those... those those stretch of, uh, of land between Ijebode, uh, Shagamu, or uh, down to Benin. See how green, you see how large those, 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 uh, those uh, lands look. Yeah. Anything you throw into this place, going to make a nice family, it will eat a lot. So that's what I'm saying. You're talking about 500 billion. Short term, 500 billion, what is going to give you? 8,000. 8, 8, if you push that into a and people reach time and make a nice family, it will help. To bring that the cost of um, food items, I might just say it's a long time project, but I can tell you that within the cycle of about seven months, eight months, some of these products can be you can eat some of these products. So what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next headline here. Suspended EFCC chair spent thirty three days in custody. That's Bawa. Yeah, um, the same thing I said. Uh, we've we'll been talking about it. If it applies to. Um, Rashid Bawa. Yes, the fact is that it's a violation of their uh, fundamental human rights as enshrined in the Constitution, um, the 1999 Constitution as amended, uh, and also international uh, uh, international uh, laws that we signed, <coughs> that we signed uh, as members of um, UN and the Af even African Union. So the fact remains that if for whatever reason, uh, you find them, uh, you, you've done your investigation and you find them wanting, then you charge them to court. The court says, the, the law says that within 24 or 48 hours, every Nigerian, irrespective of whatever crime he commits, must be charged to court. If you want to extend the detention, then you go to court. It's a court that will give you a valid time extension. But 33 days is a, is a no no for me. You know the problem we've always had? The problem we've always had, you know, Nigeria is a very, very big country. Nigeria is the only place where you, you see security agencies will arrest somebody and start, uh, and start looking for evidence. Mm. In other countries, in the US, 
or other a civilized cause. Before they pick you up, they've done the investigation, they've gotten the evidence, they pick you up, within 24 hours, 45 or 48 hours, they charge you to court. But here, they hold you, arrest you, and now start looking for evidence. Look at the way they have they, they, they practically built up the, 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 the case against a Mayfield. You say that initially what we had that was going to be charged for terrorism, it was at uh, it was uh, supporting or uh, it was financing terrorism and rest of it. At the end of it, all, man, what is is being charged for one day gone possession? Mm. Can you be that? Can you just be that? That is why they're heading for how many days now? So that, it, it doesn't make any sense. Mm. The, 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 we have a law in, in Nigeria. We have a law, and as a law abiding country. We must abide by those laws. If the security agencies don't don't be able to gather the evidence, then they should let the they should let them go. When they do, they can they, they can arrest them again and charge them. But it's just charge it, just hold them for months, irrespective. And I continue to say, every Nigerian, every individual is assumed innocent, except otherwise proved. Um, said by the court. Why, so, Chris, the, why do we continue to see this abuse of the law in this land? We've continued to see the sanctity of the judiciary being eroded, especially as you have seen in the case of Amefele, because there was a subsisting court order that restricted uh, his arrest, you know. And, and why do we continue to have this, especially since we are in a democracy? It's a country, ours is a country that don't believe in law. That's uh, our people, our most of our government officials and even security agencies believe that they are put in law. And most of I don't blame them. I blame the head because let's put it this way. Somebody appointed them. And if they are not obeying the law, then it becomes an issue. So if somebody that you appointed an appointee of government, he seems to be breaking the law. I expect the person that appointed the uh, got him appointed to call him to order. And that is the, that is place of the president. The president is the, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But when you now see a bias from the leaders, then it, it is like trying to sign, it is trying to back whatever these people are there. And they know that nobody is going to be sanctioned. Nobody is going. To, even when courts give valid um, uh, valid order, yes. they don't obey it. They disobey it. Even and a mere fella, even a mere fella himself, but, even a mere fella yes. himself, because. So, Last year, there was a Supreme Court ruling over that money thing that, that he didn't follow it. Why are we seeing so and much executive the, rascality in our system, in our democracy? What goes around comes around, but irrespective of that, the fact is that the rule of law must be key. We must be able to obey the law. In our, in our inability to obey the law leads to chaos and lawlessness across, across. So we must be able to, whether you find this whether it's, it's okay with you or it's not okay with you, the law remains what it is. We, you know, in law, we are told, uh, when I was reading law, mm. what is the, the, one of the vision of law is what is law, and the state, the, that definition says the law is what it is. Mm. Nothing to add, to remove. So, until we start obeying the laws, then we cannot be able to make progress. Because we'll be seen by Committee of Nations that this is just a lawless country. And that is the mistake has a ripple effect. Because the part of it, people don't understand that this is also have a, 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 a foreign investment, a flow of foreign investment. Because if a company coming from abroad or an individual coming from abroad knows that it runs into problem after investing here, and there's a valid court verdict on issues of dispute, and that law will not be obeyed, or that verdict will not be obeyed, then he knows that he's going to run into problems. So mm -hmm. he'd, rather, he'd rather take his fund somewhere else. Where there's a rule of law, where people obey the law. Where there's so protection we, we for him. And, yeah, protection, sorry? where there'll be protection. Exactly, where there'll be protection. Where the law says what it is and that is what it's going to exactly. be. But here, we don't do things, we just be, we don't even look at the ripple effect of some of the things we do. We just, oh, it's just about the oh, it's about power. No, it has an international dimension. If I'm making my money, one million dollars, one billion dollars, I want to invest in Nigeria, and I have any problem, in Nigeria, and the court give me a verdict, a verdict that favors me. What am I? How am I sure that 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 court uh, pronouncement will be obeyed? How am I sure that I'll be able to get my money? That in itself has a way of scaring people from investing in in countries, and that is part of what we are facing. You know, President. when President Tinubu was sworn in on the inaugural day, part of the the things he said is that uh, he was assuring the judiciary that he was not going to encroach, was going to allow them to do their thing. For me, that itself says a lot about us as a people 
a democracy where the judiciary will have to be reassured. Do not worry. I will not interfere in your activities. Because the executive have, over time, made this a norm to step into yeah, the boundaries yeah, of the judiciary. I agree. Um, they know, they know that we say that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. But in this country, common man has no hope at all when it comes to the judiciary. I'm very sorry to say um, I'm a graduate of law. But even at that, Nigerians have lost so much faith in the judiciary. And this is the time for us to give ourselves uh, as uh, members uh, in that temple of justice. Because um, you now ask yourself, even at that, but the question you also ask yourself, even when the judiciary make protest announcement, they cannot, they don't have power of enforcement. Enforcement is still with the executive. Enforcement is by the police. By the police. Enforcement is by the, uh, the prison. Enforcement is by... So most often than not, you still have this uh, issue of challenge. But those are rhetorics. When somebody say, oh, I will, I will... I will look forward to seeing what this current administration is going to do. It has been consistent over the years. Now, uh, the president, how barely how many days to go to a name to name his cabinet? Maybe by the time he constitutes his cabinet, we we'll see who is going to be the AGF and the Minister of Justice. Then maybe we will start looking at some of this. You can now have somebody can be point and hold responsible for some of these uh, anomalies as it were. Yeah. Uh, but as it were, I, President, I think have barely less than uh, 13 days to go, and I hope that um, the list of the ministers will come out as well. It is not like before, uh, like the in 2015. We have worried to practically almost six months or seven months to name its ministers. This particular president has his own time, but I think it's 60 days, and the clock is clicking. All right, look, this main, um, if you look at the picture on the Punch newspaper, the front page there, you have Army intercepts an amber bound truck with ammunition. You see all of that displayed on the front page. What yeah. do you make of that? Yeah. Very sad indeed. Um, I need to commend the military, um, the army for a good job. I need to commend the new chief of army staff and um, his, um, all his uh, commanders across Nigeria. Uh, uh, they seem to be doing the right thing. You can imagine if those arms, uh, all those ammunition of Andia went into Anambra State, where it, uh, it also for the level, uh, level of insecurity in the South, which we have seen in the past. Few, few weeks. Just yesterday, um, a lawmaker was killed um, in Enugu State. Uh, a, lot, a young man was killed by certain individuals. Then there have been a lot of um, insecurity, killing, shooting in this past few a few days uh, by certain individuals. Criminal elements who uh, say they are trying to enforce the CETA uh, two directive of an individual staying in that, that giving large, giving them order. Now, another um, almost 14 days have been declared by these same criminal elements in the southeast uh, to begin the openness mode. So, um, a lot of arms uh, that nation is finding their way, not only in, 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 in the, into the south, but also part of the country, even in the north. You see the level of high level of banditry going on in, uh, in the northwest uh, and even northeast. Uh, you see the caliber of um, ammunition that these people are, uh, are using. You ask yourself, where are they getting this ammunition? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, something should be done. It should not be done. It's not just a display on pages of newspaper, on television, and on social media. Let us get to the root of it because many of the way it happens. You've seen this display now. Give it another two, three days. That is the end. We will not hear anything about this arrest. We will not hear anything about this seizure. We will not. Uh, these, those that were arrested definitely will just be the errand boys. You have to dig, investigate, and get those behind. There are some people that are spending millions and millions of, and if not billions of naira to import this ammunition for whatever reason. That is where we should be looking yeah. at those behind it, the big boys behind it, not just mere truck boy and the whatever. There are some people behind it. Let us get them and get them prosecuted so as to start as a deterrent to others who engage in this kind of regards. Yeah, while we're taking a look at that, we're moving straight to the Delhi Trust, where you have the headline there. Enugu threatens to revoke licenses of traders observing seat at home. It's just said and done. It's not rhetoric. It's just said and done. The governor should be able to see what is he doing to be able to increase the level of security in the states. He's not just coming out and saying, I will show 
Then, um, Charles will do say more, more than that when we can go. He didn't say that. I have no sit at all. I'm not. This is he's in almost a, not over a year in office. What have you done? Is that so? I, all this for me, I just return it. We have to look at the problem as we are and look at way of holistically looking at solving this problem. It goes just be, beyond just making pronouncements between two shops and closing. Hey, but instead, he did it um, at a point when uh, the last government was there. Um, some others also have tried to do that. That is not the solution. The solution is that the holistic group of the situation, the leaders of the Southeast must come together and agree and have a roadmap mm -hmm. on ending this level of it. If that is the solution, mm -hmm. they are just working across border. That is not how the Southwest solved their problem. The Southwest came together, the governors of the Southwest came together, men, and decided on a motel. And it was funded. And now you see the relative peace that is uh, in the Southwest. If uh, it's some months back, it was difficult for you to drive from Lagos to Ibadan because you will be kidnapped along that route. If you go through the Shagamo, Ibadan, the road also. The same thing. But all that has been uh, put behind behind us now. You cannot travel to Lagos from Lagos from that Shagamo end to Ibadan. You will see a, a lineup of Amotepo, uh, police, and even military working hand in hand to be able to save. And the question I continue to ask, what are the governors of the South is doing? What are the leaders of the South? What are the traditional leaders uh, doing to make sure that the people are saying, yo, you say, oh, it is the duty of the federal government to be able to, the uh, governors don't have any right over uh, both security, the police, army, and rest. But you can do something to supplement what they are doing. Just as I said, the Southwest. So if you want to do that, they agree to set up what has happened to Ebubago. In fact, you took that out of my mouth. I was going to ask yes. you, whatever happened to Ebubago? Whatever happened to Ebubago, the one that they started in Ebony, and the governor, former governor, the who is now in was using it to arrest political opponent. And um, uh, that's what he was doing with his own Ebubago. That he has to, that led to a high court giving another, disbanding that, that, uh, that group in neighboring states, whether it still works, I don't know. So the point the leaders of the South is come together as a unit to be able to fight this fight, find a political solutions to it. Crude or whatever, whichever we look at it, within the bits of the law, they are disappointed. So if somebody said, I'm going to... So if the person goes out tomorrow to open the shop and somebody kills him, what happened to What will happen to his family? Chris, so it's not just rhetoric. Why would you, what, what would you say is responsible for the inability of the movers and shakers of the Indibo? especially the governors, to come together as a force to bring development and security to their region. Why is it so hard for uh, them to do? Lack of vision. Simple. Lack of vision. They don't have vision, and they make it worse. Most of them are just, we are elected, we are definitely elected. Uh, so that is the problem. And that is the The people also don't have confidence in their leaders. Because until people to galvanize and build some some kind of confidence with you, then people will believe you. Then the problem also remains that, as I said, being coming together because this has to do with intel. It has to do with intel. People must make sure that they are ready to give you the necessary information. This, most of these guys perpetrating this are not they are not good. They are live within they live within the southeast. People know them, but the problem is that who cannot even volunteer information. To security agencies or the government because they thought that those information given can best back to them and they'll be killed. So until you build capacity to build that confidence and give the people the assurance, people want to come out every Monday to go about their businesses. There's a report that just came out in 52 weeks. The loss um, within the, uh, the, the, the loss from the uh, from the sit up Monday sit up home in the south yeah. came to 4.813 trillion naira definitely 4.813 trillion each of the states loses about not less than about 10 billion every week for that one day um, uh, sit up so you can see that the uh, economic situation economy in the south you'll be shocked that it is happening in the south is but just a stroll through from the from the southeast, just cross River Niger and enter Asaba. Man, no, you know what I'm talking about. Mm. See life. People are moving from Monisha to all parts of the are moving. The economy of Delta State is growing because of this security going on in the southeast. Is that not a, a problem? Mm. People are not sending their children to school in Asaba. 
People are establishing uh, 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 businesses in Nasaba because they find it is not secure enough. Mm. So it takes the governors, let the governors continue to blame the federal government. Oh, Nigerian army, Nigerian police, this one, this one. They on their own, what are they doing? Mm. Or do they, are you telling me they don't have a solution to the problem? It's not possible. Well, Chris, that's a good place to live it. We've had a very robust discussion. Thank you so much for your time, as always, on Tuesdays on The Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me and have a wonderful day ahead. You Bye too. Bye. You too, Chris. Chris Kendewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, joined us here in Lagos on Off the Press. We'll take a break and come back with our very first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>